This video is an excerpt from my video which I made about making a teapot form. Um, in this video I want to show you specifically about two types of lids. The first one is the one on the left where the lid is domed, it's thrown upside down, it sits in a gallery that is slightly recessed. Um, the other type of lid also has a gallery which is slightly recessed but this lid is thrown right side up with a little flange that sticks out. Um, in both of these uh, in this video I show both of these this style of lid if you want to see more about the teapot please check out my teapot video um, which I'll put a link to in the comments so I want to show you on the pot uh, one of the things that I'm going to be looking for is I want to measure two things I want to measure the interior of the hole and then the uh, interior edge of the gallery. So let's start with the interior of the hole. Okay, these are double-ended calipers. I like these because I can measure the hole with one end and then this end will show me how big the flange will need to be inside of it. So as I show you right here, I'm going to measure this Okay, with, with the, um, the end that hooks out. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to throw my flange so it will stick up within the opening of the opposite end. Alright, so I'm going to throw this kind of upside down, almost as if it's a little bowl. And this is going to be my flange area. I'm going to Kind of split the wall with my thumb, and that then caused the clay to be where I need the flange. So I kind of pull up the flange, and then the other oops, I just dinged it with my finger, that was an accident. Let's re measure that. Now the other measurement that I need to measure is going to be the gallery itself. I need to measure how big the flange is. So as I look here, I'm going to use that to measure the internal gallery. And then the lip of the lid will need to go out and fit with that. So right now it's just a little bit bigger than I need it to be. I'm going to push that in a little bit. Compress that rim. And there we go. It's just a smidge bigger, but I'm going to go with that right now because I'd like for that to be just a little bit larger than I need it to be. Now, when I cut this off, I want to be careful not to cut, um, you know, through that bottom. So I'm going to go a little lower than I think I might need to. I'm going to cut almost all the way through, but I'm going to leave it attached right in the center, and then I'm going to do another cut just below that. And this is just like when I make the minis. I refer to this as uh, you're making a clay bat. So my upper cut, about an eighth of an inch above it, that was the cut where the bottom of the lid will be. And then that little clay bat is so when I lift it up and take it off the uh, hunk of clay, I don't mess it up terribly. Now, of course, you could uh, just throw this right on the bat and not lift it off the bat. But again, I'm trying to conserve a little time and energy. Okay, now the second kind of lid that I want, that I want to do, I am going to attempt to do um, an upright lid, one where it's right side up. And for this, I'm going to first measure that interior of the hole again. So I need to have my clay skinny enough that it would fit in the inside of the hole of the teapot. Okay, so let's hold this up. Ooh, that will just barely fit. Let's push in a little bit more. There we go. 
Okay, so that looks like that will be able to drop down in the teapot. Now, next th thing that I want to do is I want to take and I want to push up some clay, and hopefully I left enough clay here for creating a knob. Make sure I have enough water that I'm not sticking. And I really want to give an undercut to this knob so when I go to pick it up, it will not slip easily out of my fingers. Okay. And then lastly, all right, I'm going to straighten that back up again so it still fits. It got a little skinny. I mean, it got a little fatter than I intended it to be. So it needs to be able to fit and drop down in the teapot just barely. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the gallery again, that inside diameter of the gallery, so this is the wider of the two. And then I'm just going to take the edge or the rim of the lid, I'm going to thin it, and then I'm going to make it go horizontal. Because this will be the part of the lid that will actually sit on the gallery. This is the lip of the lid that will sit right on the gallery of the pot. Okay, and I went just a little bit bigger than I needed to, but that's okay. I can always trim it to be exact when I'm trimming. And there we go. Okay, and then this one, uh, again, this was thrown upright, so this one I'm just going to, uh, I, you know what, I think I might just leave this one on the bat since it's my very last one. I'm just going to leave it here on the bat. So now I have two different spout possibilities, and I have two different lid possibilities. Um, this kind of lid, and then the other kind of lid, which is the one that I threw uh, like this. So it was upside down like a little bowl with a split rim. So um, I'll let these things get leather hard, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I trim them. Okay, now that I have the foot of the teapot trimmed, now we can address the lids. So this is the lid that I made last night, and it is the one where it was made upside down like a bowl, and it will fit into the gallery like that. Now, what I need to do on this lid is I need to trim this away, and then I'll put a knob on. Now, you can trim it with it just on uh, a bat or on the given grip itself, but I am going to put it on the, um, I'll put it on the teapot, and I'll hold it in place with the Giffen Grip, and the nice thing about putting it directly on the teapot is it really will help to keep it nice and secure and you usually don't end up by damaging anything. So, I'm trimming a lid and I'm going to install a knob or I'm going to attach a knob, not install. I'm going to attach a knob like I did on to this lid and I'm just going to use some of the clay that I just trimmed off because I know it's going to be the same moisture. It's uh, a little bit more plastic than leather hard. So I'm just going to kind of slip and score and attach that onto here. Now with the ball attached, I'm going to smooth the outside of it with kind of the back of my nail. I'm using a small amount of water as I feel like I can get away with.
Okay. Now, when I added the water to throw the little knob on there, I was careful not to allow the water to run down in there. Uh, I don't want to get my lid stuck. So that is one style of lid and how I would finish that off. Now the other style of lid, probably shouldn't have touched that there, the other style of lid was the other one that I threw last night as well, and that was this style where it drops down in there. Now looks like it's not exactly dropping down in there. I'm going to have to trim some of that off. So I'll flip this upside down. At least that looks like it's fitting well. It does appear though that the part where I'd trimmed it away has a bit of a flange sticking out. So I need to just trim this off straight. And this part right here I just need to tidy this up. Okay, so that looks okay. This is kind of sticking up at an angle that's a little higher than I would really care for it to be. So I'm just going to kind of push the angle of the lid downward some. It's still plastering it up enough that I can do this without. That gives you an idea. Okay, so that's my second lid. I do hope you find this demonstration of lid making to be beneficial and uh, leave me any questions in the comment section if you have any. Good luck!